This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, Sam, see that the Lord is good. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy. Amen, somebody. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied my every morn. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Just one more time. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, just go ahead and tell the Lord, thank you. Just go ahead and tell the Lord, thank you. Just go ahead and tell him the Lord, God, I thank you. Thank you for last night's sleep. God, I thank you for this morning rise. God, I thank you that no hurt, harm, or danger would come to us in the midnight hour. And for that reason, God, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We thank you, God, that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You allowed us to see grace and mercy just one more time. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. Hey, man, somebody, do you love the Lord this morning? I said, do you love the Lord this morning? Hey, man, somebody, he, we're not doing him a favor. He's doing us a favor. Hey, man, somebody. Somebody's name was called this morning, but they couldn't respond. But here we are, just one more time, in the land of the living. And that ought to be enough to say, to say thank you. Hey, Amen, somebody. On this youth Sunday, I want to lift a familiar passage of scripture found here in the Old Testament scripture of Ezra. The book of Ezra, the third chapter, commencing at the 10th verse. The book of Ezra. And the word of God reads, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord. The priests stood in their pearl with trumpets and Levites, the sons of Aphath, with symbols to praise the Lord, according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endure forever towards Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and the heads of the father's houses, old men who had seen the first temple, they wept with a loud voice when the foundation of the temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard. A fall. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. I like to preach the few moments of mine from the sermonic theme. Some folk shouted and some folk wept. Let us pray. Father God, even right now, we know that you're God and there's no God beside you and we say thank you. We thank you, God, that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You died on Calvary, that we might have a right to eternal life, and we say thank you. Oh, God, even right now, set worn down that you might be lifted up, glorified, and magnified. And after all is said and done, let somebody be touched, healed, set free, and delivered by your word. This is your servant's prayer. Amen. Somebody. Brothers and sisters, when we look at this text this morning, the Old Testament history tells us that a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar had taken the children of Israel into Babylonian captivity, where they were prophesied 
to be in captivity for 70 years. They are in captivity for 70 years. They were away from their homeland. They were away from their temple. They were away from the cultural container in which they grew up. But God would speak to a man by the name of Cyrus. And Cyrus would allow the children of Israel to leave the Babylonian captivity and come back home to Jerusalem. For three years, for three years, all of the captives throughout the diaspora came back to Jerusalem to help build the foundation of the temple. For three years, young people and older people, they all came together to build the second house. While they were building the second house, once the foundation was laid. The Bible tells us that some shouted for joy, and yet others wept in limitations because they had remembered the former house. And I stopped by this morning to tell some folk who are guilty of staying in the past. That the God we serve is the God of the past, present, and the future. And that we can't stay in the past without looking into the future. Tradition is all right as long as it does not become a religion. I got to say that again. Tradition becomes all right as long as uh, it doesn't become a tradition because there are some folk who are guilty of nostalgia. There are some people in the church who are guilty of yesterday. But I stopped by this morning to tell somebody, yesterday is gone. Amen, somebody. Tomorrow is on its way. But we really need to deal with the right now. Those in the crowd, some wept and some shouted. The older people wept because they remembered the old church. They remembered uh, Dr. Morris Queen sitting up here on this pipe organ playing the great hymns of the church. They remember Miss Bailey and a few others who uh, contributed to the upliftment of the youth in our church. They remember the old preachers in this church. But I stopped by again to tell somebody that you cannot allow your past to allow you to become a prisoner in your own past. Because if you're stuck in the past, you can't see the future and you definitely can't see the present. And we wonder why our young people have left the church. Because some of our young people are progressive. Some of our young people see the future while you see the past. And it's all right to talk about your past, but the truth of the matter is, they weren't there when you were young. They, 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 they can't talk about ball burn number five skates. They can't talk about big wheels. They can't talk about a, re a record player with a 33 and a 45 album. They, they, they can't talk about on a Sunday when a, they had a blue law that all of the stores were closed down. Hey man, somebody. They can't talk about the fact that um, uh, 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 we automatically had Sunday dinner because there was nowhere else, where else to go for Sunday dinner. These things are the things of a man, the past. And the truth of the matter is, 
As long as you give our young people a foundation and you do the best you can, like many of us, when we get to a certain age, we say we're not coming back to church. Granny dragged me. Daddy grabbed me. Mama dragged me. And made me sit in Sunday school. They made me do some things that I didn't want to do. And by the time I got to 16, 17, 18, in the back of my mind, in the back of the church, I said, I'm not coming back to church anymore. All of us at one point in life had thought that way. Amen, somebody. But life begins to speak to us. And when life begins to speak to us, then we begin to go back to the foundation that grandma and granddad and daddy and mama brought us, aunts and uncles brought us to the house of God to give us something that would carry us from week to week, from Sunday to Sunday. And I'm mighty afraid that we have gotten to a place where we are so stuck in our past and we're so rigid in our tradition that we don't give our young people any room to offer any hope, offer any ideas to the place where they say, Pastor, we don't feel respected. We don't feel listened to. We don't feel as if our voice matters. I want to say something. Young people are impressionable. And you have to be careful of how you handle them because they will never forget how you mistreat them. You can't talk down to them. You can talk to them. Amen, somebody. You, the response that you want to get out of them, you can get out of them if you know how to handle them. But if you're dogmatic and you're mistreating them and think that they're going to respect you, it's going to make them dislike you because of the fact that you don't have to handle them that way. I remember being a little boy in this church, uh, five and six, miserable sitting still. Miserable, sit miserable sitting still. And if I moved and got fidgety, my grandmother pinched me. Listen to what, the, I don't care what the pastor say at six and seven. Life is good for me. My grandmama is the closest thing to God for me. She feeds me, she clothes me. I got a warm bed and a roof over my head based on her. I, I don't have life issues yet. And oftentimes we owe the folk want to treat our young people as if they have light issues and we disregard the fact that they are still children and young children at that. If anything, they ought to be downstairs in a Sunday school where they can have some fun. And the truth of the matter is, guess what? You can bring your children to church, but really in truth, church starts at home. The relationship of Christ is at home. The love of Christ is at home. The upbringing of Christ is at home first. Then they come and have a reverence uh, for God's house. You can't bring a child that does not have a relationship with Christ and then bring them to church and act and, 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 and expect them to be orderly. They have their tablets. They, they have their phones. They it's all right. Because as far as I'm concerned, sitting from here looking out there, they are in the house of God. And one day when you're not looking, they're looking. They're listening. And that which is placed in them, when they go out into this world, they have the foundation to fall back on. What foundation? The foundation of my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and 
his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Amen, somebody. Uh, the foundation of now and I lay me down to sleep. For the Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wait, pray that God will take my, my soul to take. Foundations. All we can do is give our young people foundational principles about Christ and about God and let the Lord work on them. Not talk down to them, not dog them, but have some, have some grace and compassion on them as, 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 as they had or somebody had grace and compassion on you. We are guilty of nostalgia. We are guilty of the past. The only time you should be looking in the past is that you're looking toward the future. That's why we have this Afrocentric symbol called Sankofa, which means a bird looking in the past going forward. Here they are at the foundation of the temple. The elders don't want to move. The elders don't want to help. The elders are in resistance to change. But then on the other side of that, we have the young people. They don't know anything about the past. Matter of fact, the scripture says that there was a generation that went into the, the promised land who did not know Joseph. A generation that went in the promised land who did not feel the suffering of, G of Egypt. Most of our children don't know what we've suffered, save that which we told them. And they really don't care on what our suffering is. And some of us who are guilty of raising them in such a way that they don't give them any account, call for any accountability. That you have created a mentality of entitlement that, 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 that they don't have to work for anything. They, they don't have to use manners. They, some people say, you can't correct my children. And like I said last Sunday, if I can't correct them or say something to them in kindness, in love, then the police will. Then the street will. Amen, somebody. The discipline starts at home and at home in church as well. Amen, somebody. We got to let them fall. Scratch their knees. Amen, somebody. When we grew up, we rode a bike with no helmet or no pads. Amen, somebody. I don't know what it is to have a peanut allergy. We, we ate peanuts every, we ate planters and all kinds of nuts Christmas time, and pecans and and, and whatever you name it, we, you know, we, the, what, what, the, the sensitivity of what we have created and parents are guilty of it. I'm not going to do what my mama did to me. I'm not going to raise my children like my father did to me. So everything in my mind that my mama did and my daddy did that I call myself getting back at them, I allow my children to do it. So there's no, yes, sir. And no man anymore. There, there, there's a level of disrespect when it comes to youth and adults and adults to you because there's a breakdown in the culture because of our own idiosyncrasies, our, our own hang ups about what we had coming up. I'm not going to make them come to church. I'm not going to drag them to church. I'm not going to, matter of fact, they don't have to, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to run red lights and get to church and let them stay in the bed. I'm not, some children don't even have chores. I went to my daughter's game when she was young and uh, it's so crazy that I was taught three strikes you out. When I went to her baseball game, they had four strikes. 
And uh, my daughter, she struck out. And she stood there. I say, get the people back to back. You struck out. I don't care what that teacher said. You get up for life. Don't give you a shot like that. Hey, Amen, somebody. You set them up for failure. You got to let them grow. You got to let them make mistakes. You got to let them, but be close enough that when they call on your name, hey Amen, somebody. Hey Amen, somebody. That they'll be there for you. That you're not so mad, so angry that you reject them like that because we've made mistakes as well. Some shouted, some wept. One looked in the past and one looked in the future. When I think about this church, this church, when I was young, the balconies were full. Hey Amen, somebody. Prominent doctors and politicians. I feel the bottom rows. Hey Amen, somebody. But they've died off now and gone on with the Lord. And some of their family members who are alive, they don't come back anymore. Some have gone to other churches where they feel it's more progressive lighting and, 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 and padding on the pews. Hey Amen, somebody. More modern songs. Hey Amen, somebody. There are various reasons why they leave, but then there are a remnant that stays. And I stopped by this morning in my clothes to tell somebody, it's not about the past, and it's not about the future, it's about the now. Amen, somebody. I say amen, somebody. The Lord is blessing you right now. Amen, somebody. You got a job to go to tomorrow, right now. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. You got a roof on your head right now, shoes on your feet right now, clothing on your back right now, a reasonable person helping script right now. We sing every Sunday, the Lord is blessing me right now, all right now. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. I'm not concerned about the past, and I'm not concerned about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. But I'm concerned with the right now. Amen, somebody. And if we're going to make a difference in our church, we need to deal with right now. We don't need to deal with what happened yesterday. Amen, somebody. We can think about tomorrow, but we need to deal with right now. And right now is we have a precious group of young people who are now about to go off to college. We don't have that many young people as it is, but the ones that are about to leave us, we pray that what's placed in them will allow them to deal with the evil, the vicissitudes, the temptations that's in that world. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Are you Sundays? Really, she should be preaching. Amen, somebody. Really, he should be preaching. Amen, somebody. But in time, in time, God will work on her and him and as he worked on us. In time. Some wept. Some shouted. But I'm going to shout right now because I'm blessed to see young folk in the house. Hey Amen, somebody. They're not in gangs. They're not twerking. They're not, hey Amen, somebody. They're not disrespectful. Hey Amen, somebody. And they have a bright future right now. So when we look at our young people, all I ask is that you have some grace. You have some kindness. You have some understanding because we were young one time. And then young people, remember that for the 18 years or as long as you've been in this church, there have been older people who have dug in their pockets and given you balled up money, who have given you cards. Even, even when you didn't pass, 
They encouraged you. Even when you didn't sing the song like you should sing it, they still hugged on you and loved on you. They, they gave you the best that they could. And now that they are getting older and they're getting feeble and their steps are getting slower, you have to be able to give something back to those that gave something back to you. You have to pray for them like they prayed for you. You have to have words of encouragement like they had encouragement for you. And in that, we have a generation that will lift up the name of the Lord. In this text, the problem was the older folk were stuck in the past. The younger folk worried about the future, but nobody worried about God. Ah, the text was that when they rebuilt the temple, Miss Kerr, it was for the glory of the Lord. Amen, somebody. And I don't know about you, but whatever you do for Christ, the only thing you do for Christ will last. He said, you can have anything in my name. Ask it in my name and you shall receive it in my name. Long as you keep God out front, it's nothing wrong with being successful. Long as you keep God out front, you don't know how far the Lord will take you. But you need to be able to focus on him right now. If the Lord has done anything for you this week that you know that nobody else could do anything for, you ought to go ahead and tell him thank you. You ought to go ahead and tell him thank you. If no one came to you in the midnight hour, you ought to go ahead and tell him thank you. In the storm and in, in traffic, you ought to tell him thank you, Lord. That you allow me to see another day. You allow me to get from point A to point B. You allow me to be blessed just because I know you. Worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. Keep his foundation and the Lord will bless you. God bless you and may him smile upon you. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Let the church sing. Let the church sing. Let the church sing. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God be with you. Go